everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am in the very early stages of planning a colorway that I would like to use for a whole sweater. When I filmed my 300th episode of Dye Pot Weekly, at the very end I created this pink yarn glazed with navy from a one pot broken colorway that I absolutely love. This color is just amazing, it's perfect, but also subtle enough, it feels very heathered, that I think it would make a gorgeous sweater that I would really, really love to wear. In general, I try not to do navy sweaters and stuff because like a lot of my pants are dark denim, but I, I wanna do this as a sweater. So today, I'm not dyeing a sweater quantity's worth of yarn. Today, I am testing out the technique and shifting maybe the dye proportions a little bit to get a little closer, working on that recipe of what I want, and dyeing a yarn base that is the most similar to the one that I will use for the sweater to sort of prototype the colorway and see if it's working the way I want before then buying the actual yarn that I will need to make the sweater and doing that. So consider this a part one on a journey to dyeing a sweater's quantity of yarn to make myself a sweater. Or maybe this is part zero, not even part one yet. Part one might be the dyeing. <laughs> In Dye Pot Weekly 300, I think one of my favorites was actually a single ply, but I don't really want to make myself out of a sweater out of a single ply yarn. I want something that's a little bit more durable. And so I'm thinking about Wool to Die For's Crazy 8. Now this is the Crazy 8 DK, and it does come in a worsted weight version, which is the one I think I would want to use for my sweater. The yarn construction is actually eight ply. It is four ply of two ply yarn, which makes it round and bouncy. And I know that you can get awesome glazed effects from something very similar I did in the summer mini skein mini series with this yarn base on mini skeins. So I wanna test the colorway out on 300 grams of this Crazy 8 DK today. I am going to pre-soak the yarn for at least 30 minutes in some plain tap water. I honestly don't know if I'm just gonna do one version of this today or if I might do multiple versions. I think that I do have a few concerns about my glazing technique and doing this intentionally. And one of those concerns is that when you add the yarn to the pot, I did move it around a bit at first, but then the really important thing was just to stop touching it and let it sit so those colors absorb. I suppose that I have a little bit more time to move things around and starting cold or cool did help but I am legitimately concerned about getting a quote even amount for a sweater's quantity. But one thing I can do when I eventually get there is if there's some variation, I can sort of arrange the skeins based on like least solid to most and then sort of do an unintentional fade, but on purpose. But we'll see and maybe maybe we will do a second batch just to look at consistency i don't know yet how many skeins i would need to do a sweater for myself um i haven't calculated that yet but i do know that it's probably more than i would want to fit in one pan where still having enough water volume so that way their things aren't that crowded. So that is something I have to consider uh, for this particular colorway. I put on my rubber respirator, safety glasses, and gloves, and then measured out 1.6 grams of Jacquard Hot Fuchsia Acid Dye. When I did this colorway before, I used approximately one third of a cup of 1% stock solutions of both Jacquard Hot Fuchsia and Dharma Dark Navy. This would be about 80 milliliters or 0.8 grams of dye of each color. Today, I want to pump up that pink a little bit, a lot. I wanna pump up the pink and also increase the navy just slightly. So I weighed out 1.6 grams of Jacquard Hot Fuchsia dye and then dissolved it in a non-specific volume of warm tap water because we're gonna use all of this dye 
on our 300 grams of yarn. I think I probably could have switched to Dharma Fluorescent Fuchsia versus the Jacquard Hot Fuchsia. Those colors, I believe, are extraordinarily similar. But since I used this Hot Fuchsia in the prototype and I loved the results, I would like to use this specific color again. <laughs> I truly enjoy both Dharma and Jacquard acid dyes. Dharma dyes in general tend to be a bit cheaper, which is why I use those more frequently than my Jacquard dyes. But with both brands, each of them have some colors I love more and less, and so uh, I think that they're all fun to play with. In my 12 quart stainless steel dye pot, I'm gonna add all of that fuchsia dye that we just mixed. Uh, and we will stir it up better momentarily. But now I want to add a bit more navy than what I did last time. Last time we did a third of a cup, which is about 80 milliliters. This time I'm gonna add half of a cup of the dark navy. So not a huge increase in color, but now we're adding about 120 milliliters, still for 300 grams of yarn. So we've got a lovely purplish color in here now. As for acid, I want to add one and a half cups of white vinegar. And I need to get some more. I purchase vinegar in huge tubs, in huge jugs, so it's hard to measure directly from the jug, which is why I pour it into a cup first. That's two. And why not do a third? Mainly, I haven't edited Dye Pot Weekly 300 yet, so I don't have what those final acid conditions were like. There may have been almost two cups of white vinegar in there by the end. I think that in general, when you want this much acid, it makes a lot more sense to go to citric acid, but I do wanna to try to get as close to the conditions I had previously as possible. So now I'm gonna bring this over to the stove. The color balance is all completely off. I just turned on the heat, but the dye bath is still very, very cool uh, because we literally just brought it over. The dye bath being cool may make things a little bit harder to replicate. I'm going to add the yarn in right now. Huh, I am really, really not feeling much of the navy at the moment. Maybe I totally messed up the proportions but I'm definitely feeling that pink. And so I'm just raising it and dipping it a couple times to get good coverage. And now I'm gonna leave the yarn in here, but I'm now a little worried that I maybe didn't stir things up enough. Where did the navy feel go? Why is it just looking pink? It's as though the navy just disappeared. Huh, all right, well anyway, I'm gonna heat this up if it gets too hot, I will reduce the heat, but we're now going to, I guess, come back in 30 minutes and kind of cross my fingers. It is really hard for me to sit here and not move the yarn around more. Uh, I need to trust the process and trust there's enough water that the yarn isn't too compressed together, which means that that navy can access more of the fibers. So I think one of the things that I'm definitely struggling with is that the navy might not have really great access everywhere. And so therefore, uh, yeah, if the navy doesn't feel like as even, uh, if it's a lot more variegated, that'll lead to more differences between skeins and I'm overthinking things again. I am overthinking. Now, navy sometimes can look purple, and so it's possible that with the acid it looks purple, and then it, uh, with the heat, it'll like look more navy again, so I don't know. I didn't try this cold. I liked the results I did starting with cold when I used the black, but with navy it was coolish, but not cold, so <laughs> lots of variables, lots of things. If this doesn't work, we're gonna get pretty yarn no matter what. So if this doesn't work perfectly, then we'll troubleshoot. But uh, <laughs> I am nervous, which when I'm going into something wanting a specific result, and this time I was like, ooh, I like how this came out, but I want the colors more saturated overall. So let's increase the amount of dye. 
but when you're hoping for something specific, then it is a little easier to get upset or maybe feel disappointed or anxious when you're waiting to see what's going on in the pot. But I'm gonna give it time, I'm gonna back up, <laughs> and then when the timer goes off, we'll go check on the yarn. 30 minutes in, the navy is there. Uh, I am gonna move it. Just wanna see, okay, there's a lot of color left. We expected lots of pinks left, but I did just want to carefully move it. And I'm not sure how much, eh, when I see it underwater, I do see the glazing. I see, I think it's a little more subtle because there's going to be more pink, but I do see uh, uneven color coverage, which, whew, good, good, okay. <laughs> we are still not that hot, uh, but I will... I guess continue to let it heat up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and probably set a timer for, I think an hour before I come back and check in again. It has been an hour. And can you sort of see beneath the surface that we have that shallow navy? I think it is a tiny bit more subtle than in the other yarn because I've intensified the pink, but I am the navy, but I am very, very happy with this. There is a lot of pink left. That is one of the natures of this color. I'm gonna leave the yarn here in the pot. Well, I'll turn off the heat, move it to a cool burner, and it is gonna cool so super slowly. It's gonna take hours to cool. Uh, we may leave it overnight or I may stop sooner, but I'm certainly gonna set this aside. And yay, it worked. <laughs> I definitely got nervous there. I got very nervous, but the color has done what I wanted it to do. I'll be able to see from here if I wanna tweak those proportions or that recipe a little more, but we know that these colors with potentially less work great and I expect that this would work really well on the worsted weight version of this base because the plies will be a little bit thicker and that only helps with glazing type things. The one problem is how long it takes these pots to cool. That is not a tiny problem uh, and so therefore that could make it a lot harder to scale things up and do it over the course of you know, of a day to do potentially three batches if I don't think I can try to do four in this pot. And especially my other pot is smaller. I don't really want to buy another big pot just to do this for a sweater's quantity. So I'll have to consider things to do. Oh, certainly I could do this in the big pot and then transfer the yarn to the smaller pot for the cooling portion of things. That's definitely an option. That's an option that I should consider. Uh, or once it gets cool enough, I could even transfer it to say a five gallon bucket. Uh, I believe I have put boiling water in those before, but in general, that's not something I want to do. But I could transfer it to, or even one of my uh, catering steam pans, I could transfer the yarn into there once it's cooled a bit, not quite this hot, but once it's cooled a bit so that way I can reuse the big pot. Uh, to do another batch. So I'll have to think about that. But it would be really hard for me to dye, say, like 20 or 30 skeins in this colorway with the setup that I have, unless I had more pots at my disposal because of that long cool off that's required. But uh, I mean, I'll still do my best to make it work. <laughs> Certainly, I will probably buy a lot more yarn than I think I'll need to get a sweater's quantity which I think being safe, I think I want to dye like 10. I don't have, I don't need 10 skeins, but I think I want to dye like a lot so that way I have more than enough. We'll see, but that's a project for another day. This was just me seeing if I can get the effect that I want on the type of yarn base I want to use. And so I potentially could fit a fourth skein of yarn in there be a bit more crowded, but maybe instead I'd do four batches. We'll see. <laughs> but now let's let it cool off a fair amount. Now let's wash this glazed yarn. Check it out. You can see those layers of color and I think it's a bit overexposed. That's more true to what I see on camera. This is my first time 
dyeing this crazy eight uh, yarn in full skeins. I have dyed it multiple times in minis. And so we're seeing a little bit of color in the water, which is not surprising given that we have a tiny bit of color left in the pot. So that can uh, happen, but we'll see if that resolves pretty quickly. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm hoping that when it dries, it's still fairly saturated. I loved the effects from that first test I did, but it was a little more, a little less saturated than what I want. And I really, really like this. So I know it'll lighten some when it dries, but hopefully not a lot. All right, I'm gonna add some clear dish soap. And we will see. Yeah, we're having some bleeding here. Uh, could be a bit of the addition of soap, uh, but also just could be because of that fuchsia. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this soak. I'm gonna fill it up the rest of the way and I'm gonna let it soak for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we will, uh, if it's still bleeding heavily after that soak, we will use some central foam. But Rebecca, do you want a sweater out of a yarn that bleeds? So first of all, this amount of bleeding is not that bad. Uh, the amount of pink in the yarn doesn't look lighter from it. So therefore I'm not super concerned, especially knowing that this is a color that can and will bleed, especially if I'm using it at a higher depth of shade, which we're still under 1% for the pink, but it's still more than what I used previously. I would be very concerned if I can't rinse it to clear or 99% clear right now, which I'm expecting and anticipating I will be able to do. But honestly, with my hand knits, I tend to hand wash and then line dry or uh, block dry anyway, so I'm not that concerned, but I do recommend with hand dyed or even commercially dyed yarn, the first few washes, wash it on its own or with dark colors, just in case some color comes out. I mean, you're not gonna wash your brand new dark wash blue jeans with white shirts necessarily because there's a strong chance that it'll turn those shirts blue. So it's something to keep in mind even with uh, commercially dyed items that bleeding can happen based on water chemistry and things like that. Uh, but I do think that this soak should help and thankfully the bleeding isn't causing the color in the yarn to appear less pigmented. So that is good. But anyway, well, let's get back to washing. All right, it has been 10 minutes, I'm a little over. Um, and there's a lot of pink in the water, but it is not substantially more than what I had seen previously, maybe a bit. I mean, it's not great. I would not stop at that level of pink. But I get this question sometimes, if you have bleeding and the color just won't stop coming out, if you're planning on using the yarn yourself, then you can stop washing, knit with the yarn, and then work on washing the finished item. Uh, but if it's something you're gonna sell, <laughs> I think that it's probably better to try to get the bleeding resolved as much as possible. Um, and another thing I will add is that the yarn, I'm washing three skeins at a time in this little tub. Uh, I think that using a, I do this for quick changes for filming purposes. I think that uh, if you have a larger receptacle, then that could be good as well. But, all right. I am going to do a few more rinses. Uh, I can set up and then, um, then we'll think about doing another soap with Super Bowl. I did a number of rinses in just plain tap water 
and the amount of bleeding didn't get worse, but also didn't get significantly better. Yeah. I'm not seeing much improvement at all. So what I am going to do is we're going to switch to a larger bucket uh, and then add synthrocol. Okay, this is my five gallon bucket and I have just a little bit of water in there already, but I'm going to take, I think about a cap full, oops, of the synthrocol. This is a low foam textile detergent. And I mean, I just added a lot, but we're gonna add a lot of water in here. So one of its purposes, and it's low foaming, but I added enough that we're foaming, is that it does help uh, prevent back staining of unbound dye. So I am still on cool water. I potentially should be, well, I always, you don't wanna really use warm water with acid dyes because it can, uh, cause, it can cause bleeding. But unfortunately, we can't really see, um, you kind of get a flash that it is quite pink. Um, but I'm gonna keep filling this up a bit, and then I'm gonna let this soak for, goodness, at least 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and grab just, oh, actually, that might not be so bad. And we've got a lot of water volume in here. So, if I take a little bit of the water out, that's not very pink. But, where are all my zip ties? So that could be good. I mean, with more of the water volume, you do see that there is pink in the bucket, but the uh, bleeding is less uh, concentrated than it was. And so hopefully uh, we will be able to pull more of the dye out of this yarn and have it in the water so then we can get the bleeding to stop. So in the times I've used purple pop and tried with synthropol, a soak with either dish soap or synthropol did help the bleeding stop after a reasonable soak. So that was a different color. I don't know for sure why it's not happening the same way right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this for 15 minutes. Then just a little bit over 15 minutes. And I mean, I'm absolutely seeing pink in the water, but we knew that was gonna happen. Let's see, okay, we can now visibly see the pink when I check it in a cup, which is our little bit of a benchmark as we go and rinse this some more. But the hope is that this soak and this large volume of water will help draw out more of those pinks. We'll probably go back to the bucket in a second, but I thought it might also just be handy for me to see now what is going to happen here in the white tub. All right, let's see, uh, bummer. This might be, for, for all I said, like this isn't a ton of bleeding still. And I think making something for myself could be okay, but I might want to reduce the amount of paint. But, especially since, you know what? This isn't looking less than what I was seeing before. Now, to be fair, the amount of dye coming out, the amount of dye in, is still very small. It's just very, very frustrating. I think I might want to heat set this again. I could go back to the bucket and do more rinses there, but the fact that the amount coming out is still the same is giving me pause. I suppose there's still some soap in here. If I felt like the amount of color in the rinse water were decreasing, then I probably wouldn't be as frustrated, but it's still seeming to be just as vibrant as it has been, even though no color is coming out of the yarn. So I think let's go ahead and reheat set this. 
Okay, I've added a couple inches of water. Maybe we'll use more. Let's add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. And then I am gonna come in with the yarn. And I'm just adding it in. And so this is not as acidic as things were before, but it's also more compact, but hopefully it should help. So I'm now gonna take this to the stove. I'll just bring this up and then keep it on medium low heat, just below a boil for those 30 minutes. Uh, this shouldn't affect the glazing or anything like that. Uh, it's just possible that there's something in there that could just use another set. I suppose we could have soaked it with some vinegar and then steam set it. That is also a very viable option. But uh, yeah, let's, let's see if this will help make a difference. But when I did first dissolve that fluorescent fuchsia, and poured it in the pot, it did seem rather uh, like not as well dissolved as I thought. It almost looked like particles floating around. So there's a chance that that is having something to do with it. And maybe I want to consider swapping to say Derma fluorescent fuchsia uh, instead of, or even I guess go to purple pop uh, instead of using the hot fuchsia from Jacquard. All right, so lessons, I am absolutely gonna pay more attention to making my dye stock with hot fuchsia. I mean, there's a lot of color in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead after the, these 30 minutes and turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool. But if this didn't make a difference, then maybe going forward when it has heat set long enough, I will remove the yarn at that point, even with some pink left in the pot, and maybe steam set directly uh, to try to set everything that is present there. But we'll see. This may help, it may not. <laughs> but I'll come back once everything is cool. A couple hours later, and almost all the color is in the yarn. The yarn is still a tad warm, so I think I'm gonna leave it in here a little bit longer before we wash it, but I won't show this pot again. You can see that the color has basically cleared, so let's cross our fingers. Fingers crossed, we don't see nearly as much color bleeding now as we did this morning. <laughs> let's do this. Fingers crossed. Sometimes something, I'm seeing a little bit of bleeding. But fingers crossed. Man, this is annoying. Okay, but we're gonna be hopeful. I mean, that's better than it was. Not significantly, though. Uh, all right, I am going to wash. Uh, I think, actually, we're gonna use just a tiny bit of some sugar pole that was on the outside of the bottle, not too much soap, and let's see how this is doing. Okay, there's still bleeding. Maybe it's less, I don't know. Uh, certainly, we have heat set it again, and that did not make a huge difference. So I think I am going to fill this up, let it soak, and then it's going to soak for maybe around an hour, and then I'll think about what I want to do with it. Let's go ahead and add three tablespoons of white vinegar to our soak. Uh, my cow water tends to be slightly acidic, but sometimes... There's nothing wrong with needing to leave a little bit of acid in. And honestly, I mean, this is currently lighter than it was before. So I think that the acid might be uh, necessary for that. But I'm gonna let this soak for a long time. Okay, after a while, and I shouldn't forget that I do have vinegar in here. Ah, uh, it's. 
it is better. I mean, it's not extreme bleeding. Uh, I will rinse this a couple more times and then I'll make a decision. I rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and I think it's a hair better than it was before, but not significantly better. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to rethink it. I might try with the Dharma fluorescent pink beauty. Something I don't think I used too much pink, so I don't really know. But we're not having any change. And so this is something that if I were going to list this yarn in my shop, I would give a big disclosure at the top of the listing that there is some bleeding risk with it. But the color in the yarn is standing firm. So I think it's not that much, but uh, yeah, I'm going to put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry and we'll chat once it's dry. It seriously has been months since I filmed this. I thought I wanted to pump up the pink, but turns out I don't think I do. And so I think that this is what I want to go back to and this is what I want to use. Of course, it's not just the color that is why I want to go back to the original recipe. It's the bleeding that I could not get to stop. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot how much bleeding there was in the time since I originally filmed this back in July 2021 to when I was editing and filmed these conclusions in January and February 2022. This is why note taking can be so important with projects because I could remember that there was something I was disappointed about and I was like, oh, wait, is it the color? And I'm glad that I have these videos that I can go back and check the yarn and see, ooh, maybe this is a mistake. Maybe I should change this and try something else. So right now, my gut says to go back to the original ratio where I used about a third of a cup of the fluorescent pink and a third of the cup of dark navy. And I'm gonna try that again, but I might change to fluorescent fuchsia from Derma instead of hot fuchsia from Jacquard, mainly because I have more of the Derma dye at my disposal. And also, I think I've made a dye stock of that before and it behaved a little bit better, but I also think that the Jacquard one behaved better in the past as well. So, I don't know. All I do know is that the previous ratio was not very much a bleeder, and so therefore, Let's try and start there again and give this another shot. It is absolutely worth playing around with colorways, especially when there's something you want to create for a sweater's quantity in a smaller batch to get that recipe down. So for the next iteration of this very long term series, I am going to dye this color again to see if I get closer to what I want. I think that the color that we got here uh, is absolutely spectacular. It's just not the one that I want for a sweater for me. It has been a long time since I dyed this yarn and the effect of that navy glaze with the pink going deeper is gorgeous and what I want for a sweater. Unfortunately, the tone here is a lot more pink than it was originally. The Crazy 8 base from Wool to Die For is so incredibly bouncy. Having these high twist plies and having eight of them in the yarn just gives us this delightful way of picking up color in this shallow and deep way and oh my goodness, I am excited to do the next iteration of the trials for this colorway that I want. I really hope that you are enjoying this journey. I know now that it's 2022 that I'm filming these conclusions. Who knows if I will even start the sweater in this calendar year. But I hope that I will get to the point where I will prototype and be happy with the final color and then dye up the yarn for the sweater, even if I don't start knitting it yet. <laughs>
That is my goal for 2022, at least with regards to this project. Please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I love to play with color and yarn, and every week I have at least one and usually two new videos of me uh, expanding my techniques and continuing to learn and grow as a dyer. If you would like other ways to help support the content here, I do have an Etsy shop where a lot of the yarn from my videos ends up, and I also have a Patreon. Uh, just go check out patreon.com slash chemnitz and learn more about how you can get behind the scenes sneak peeks, exclusive content, and more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.